Hello and welcome back to the ORM series. This is part four. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how to perform union queries utilizing the Django ORM. So this should be a fairly straightforward and not too lengthy tutorial. I'll quickly show you some examples, give you some instructions and go through some of the things you can and can't do with a union query. Uh, we'll view the SQL and see if we can determine what's happening there. And as per normal, we can run query performances on this like we've been doing on the previous tutorials. So let's just start by saying that the SQL union operator is used to combine the result sets of two or more select statements. So here we're basically combining two or more select statements. So I guess one of the biggest questions here is, well, when would I want to use a union operator? I suppose the simplest way of answering that query or that question is to say, well, when you want all the records from both queries and those that data will be formulated into one, um, I'm going to say object, which you can then utilize within your template. So when you think of things like that, potentially then this might be utilized when you're generating lists or dropdown lists, for example, where you want to generate the information from separate tables, for example. A kind of more abstract advanced answer would be when you're using non-normalized tables that you, for example, want to normalize for a given reason, but you don't want to change the original table. That could also be a time where you want to use a, a union. Okay, so let's set this up. If you're not familiar with this code and you haven't seen the previous tutorials, uh, we've got two simple, we've got the core app here with the settings and then we've got the student app. You can go ahead and have a look at the model and the database. We're running a really simple database at the moment. Uh, nothing too crazy there. So go ahead and um, have a look at that. This is the model that we're using. It's just a teacher and student. There isn't any dependencies here between these two tables. We haven't set that up yet. So let's go ahead over to the view. And uh, this is part four. So let's just put this under here and then we'll go ahead and set up a union example. So let's just start off with a really simple example. We know that our table, our SQL, sorry, our, our table here, this is a student table, has first name and surname. So let's just go into our Explorer and have a look at the teacher table. It also has first name and surname. So what we're going to do is set up a simple union where we select the first name from the student table and the first name from the teacher table. And then we can put that together into one output. So let's go ahead and we're going to use this function again so we can output it to the template that we have available in, let me just drop this down, in the uh, student app. So let's go ahead, let's just zoom in so we can see what we're doing. Um, so let's say posts again, and this time student uh, objects, and then also we want to collect all the data from the student object, the student table, sorry. And then we're going to uh, select the values, so dot values. And then we're going to select uh, the first name Okay, and then we want to create a union. So we also want to select the first names from the teacher table. So we need to actually import the teacher table. We don't have it available yet in this view. So we'll do that in a second. Let's just finish this uh, all. Okay, and then we need the dot again and values. Oh, I had it there actually. Uh, values list. Yep. Okay, so and then we just need to then define again the uh, first name. There we go. So we define the first name again. So we selected all of the first names from the student table and same with the teacher. So I'm just going to copy that, go back to the top. And uh, we need to just also import the student table from the models. So I've gone ahead and done that. Uh, so there we go. So now we just need to output it as per normal. So I'll go ahead and just run that. So we're outputting it to the terminal, the actual return data. We're then, we could, for example, output the query in that way, but we have been utilizing connection queries. So don't forget to include that in the imports at the top. 
if you do want to use this. This is just going to show us the SQL code and how long it took to execute. Right, so now we have that in place. Uh, let's go back into our page here. We'll refresh. Uh, we can't be reached because we probably don't have the server turned on. So let's just uh, go back in. I run the server. So we seem to have a problem here. Uh, module student views has no attribute student list. Okay. Right, so what's going on here? Student objects all uh, dot values and then the first name. Okay, sorry, I have uh, didn't remove this. So the name, the view was incorrectly named. So now we can go back into our view here. So names post is not defined. Okay, so it was post, post, uh, post. Um, ah, okay, so we did that wrong. I probably got screaming at the screen there before you're telling me it's wrong. So yes, we want to put the values into this uh, variable here that's returned. So then we can output it to our template. So if I refresh again, and there we go. So here we have all the names of the students and all the names of the teachers. So because we've run the print posts and the connection queries here, we can have a look in the console. We can see that at the bottom here, we have some additional data that we can have a look through. So we can see the query set that it's returned with all the data. So there's six uh, items in my database or six users or three students and three staff. So that's why it outputs that. So let's have a look at this SQL statement. So select uh, the student student first name from student student. So here we're selecting, so student student, I haven't really explained this. So what's student student all the time? So notice that our application is called student and our table is called student. So that pretty much defines that there. So our first name, so that's what we select from student, the first name. And then we then uh, create a union. So we select the first name, sorry, from student student. That's the student app and then the student uh, table. And then from, and that's obviously the student and student table again. And then now we use, use the union. So you can see the SQL code here clearly identifies union. And then we just run another select because like I said at the start, the union is basically two select statements put together. The data is returned and put together. So here it just runs like it did originally uh, from, in this case, the teacher table. So that's pretty much the only difference there. And you can see the time it took to execute, uh, which is 0 0.00, because obviously I'm using the the local machine. So that probably shouldn't change from 0 0.000. Okay, so we can clearly see and we, we can read through the SQL code and get a little bit more familiar with that. Now, it's probably worth noting a few different rules here with the union, or just at least, at least one rule that you need to be aware of. So this is the first rule. Let's have a look at the first names. So I'm just going to copy this first name. Uh, this is from the student table. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to add this into the teacher table. So I'm just going to go into the admin and go to the teachers. I'm just going to add this name. So I'm going to add this teacher. Um, surname doesn't matter. Just press save. So clearly what we have now is a teacher's first name is the same as one of the student's name. So let's go ahead and just uh, run this query again. So notice what gets outputted is still six items. We don't actually show the new um, teacher, which has the same name as one of the student's names. So one thing that you need to understand about a union is that it removes any duplicate rows between the various select statements. And that can be fairly useful um, in some situations because you don't want to output the um, any duplicate rows. So again, it depends on what you're utilizing this for, but that can be a really valuable thing to have instead of you then having to filter that out. So hopefully that was clear. And then the second rule that I want to tell you about is that the, we're performing the union with query sets which only have the same fields and data types. So here we're utilizing first name. So we can't run a, a union across 
and return data if they don't both have the same fields and the data types. So that's another key item because essentially what we're doing is we're putting this all into to one uh, object. So we want to make sure that whatever we take out from one pot, it's the same as the other pot. So we can put it together and produce a consistent output of those items. So my final point is just to kind of make you aware of something. My stomach is rumbling. Um, I wasn't going to make you aware of that. So one, one of the key principles of working with data is knowing how the data is returned because data can get returned from a database in many different ways. And we obviously we need to handle that differently based upon the data that's returned. So I've mentioned, oh, I started to drop in words. Um, for example, the database returns objects. So we can work with those objects. So the database can also return the data as dictionaries. And also the third items, for example, tuples. So there's there's a range of different ways the database can return data. So what I've done here is I've changed um, what we had here, values list. I've just returned it as values this time. I just want to show you the difference here. So if we were uh, utilize values, the data is going to be returned back in dictionaries. So let's have a look to see what that looks like. So this is the dictionary. You notice here we've got the uh, attribute name or kind of key value pairs almost here. Uh, if we move that back to the list and run it again, you can see we've got this here. Now it does give you a little bit of guidance here in the Django documentation. You know how much I love to show the Django documentation. Uh, so it'd be well worth reading through this and just asking yourself the basic question of what's the difference between, for example, objects and dictionaries. How would you handle those differently when the data is returned from a database? And I guess in addition to that, um, having these type of tools here where you're printing out the uh, the code, what gets returned, or potentially if you're using the console here, um, like I showed you in the first tutorial or the second tutorial, how to run queries in the actual console or the uh, the terminal, sorry. Um, that gives you an idea of what the data has been, what data is being returned, so you know how to deal with the data. I guess what I've done there is I've invented, invented another tutorial which I need to build, and to tell you about how to deal with different data, or just to go over the different data types. Okay, right. So I think we've done here. Um, that's pretty much all I want to show you with unions. Hopefully, you get the general idea now of utilizing a union where it potentially might be useful, and a little idea of. Uh, what data is actually being returned so you know how to actually then deal with that data and output it onto your templates or do whatever you need to do with that data. Okay, thank you very much for sitting through yet another tutorial. Um, if, it's, if it's your first tutorial, then thank you for listening through. I hope that was valuable to you and I hope that you can then go and explore some of the other tutorials that we have in this channel. Thank you very much for listening and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.